Well, it's a three-day event and it attracts around 14,000 enthusiastic fans, some of them specifically to watch this man. His name is Vitislav Nikolin. Slava is his nickname, he won the Master of Spikes twice and should he win it again, he not only gets the trophy to keep, he gets an additional £10,000. He faced some tough opponents, 17 riders from six countries, including this man, Frankie Zorn from Austria, runner-up in last year's World Championship. He's a favourite with the fans, but so was this lady a few minutes before. She was getting painted. And she rides there with Russian Vladimir Fadiv, the world champion of 99. He's enjoying her company. And they really know how to get the fans going here. And we go straight away into the first heat. Normal speedway rules. Winner will get four points and there will be three finals. In fact, four finals. An A, a B, a C and a D final. But the all-important thing at the end of it all is the Master of Spikes Grand Final. Tell you more about that a little bit later on. And there, Balashov, Oblom, Boa and Sereny has get on the way. And it's £10,000 eventually to the final winner. And the first heat, Balashov takes the lead from the outside, followed by Serenius, Bauer and Oblom. 52-year-old Swede tried to find a way past the leading Russian, but Balashov not only holds on to his lead, he's even extending it. And the 33-year-old from Moscow who runs his own team has just lost his sponsor. And Balashov on his way to a much-needed win. Recently he's having to work on the bikes himself. He's had to cut down of the number of the mechanics in the team. Alexander Balashov, the winner of the first heat. There's already been the first half of the tournament. And he literally is streaking away with it, isn't he? Up goes the wheelie. And no doubt about that. Lumpov, known as uh, Limpy, won the, the first section. That was at the weekend. Started prior to the weekend of December 16th, 17th. And he automatically has a place in the grand final. But whether Balashov makes it, we'll have to see. Heat two. Titi Brutma from the Netherlands. Tatoski Jr. from the Czech Republic. That man Nikolin. Slavi Nikolin from Russia. And Kasakov also from Russia. They're on the marks and away they go. And Nikolin takes the lead ahead of Klosowski, Bootsma and Kasakov. And Nikolin with a declaration of intent. Getting away in the lead. The Dutchman Bootsma trying to seek second place away from Klosowski. But Nikolin well focused, trying to get away. 30 years of age, now lives in Germany. Born in Russia. He rides with a German license. And he used the Italian GM engines rather than the Jawa that everyone else uses. And he's showing why he's got the sort of form that if he managed to win this one, would see him not only get 10,000, they're talking about the grand final, 10,000 for winning the tournament, but another 10,000 pound, and to keep the trophy, the Master of Spikes trophy, for having won it three times, he's won it twice before, no one else has. So, Nicklin wins, Bootsma finally managed to win the fight for second place on the very last turn. looking things, those spikes on me. 
2.8 centimeters in length, there's 180 in the front wheel, 200 in the rear wheel. The engine's a 500cc, one cylinder, two valve. They deliver 70 brake horsepower at 11,000 revs. The upright engines deliver 66 at 9,500. Minimum weight of bikes, 110 kilograms. No brakes at all, of course. Alright, hope you've rung all your friends and got them to watch as well, particularly if they're Speedway fans, but if they're fast motorsport fans, they should be watching British Eurosport tonight. I can tell you we've got some cracking racing to come. Heat 3, Eiko of Finland, Spenson of Sweden, Lumpov Lumpy of Russia, and Henriksen of Finland. And Lumpov gets the best start, showing the sort of form which uh, set him up nicely by winning the first part of this tournament, already completed to book his place in that grand final. Eiko tried his luck on turn one, but he's got to be content with third place behind Benson for the moment. Lumpov leads. And behind, Svensson gets under pressure from Eko, the youngest rider in the field, he's just 21 years old. And Lumpy really cruising to an easy win, mainly because uh, the two behind him are battling with each other, holding each other up, and when he held up, your history. And you're looking at a man there who maybe will be the master of spikes. Vladimir Lumpov from Russia. Russians really dominate in this sport. But you're going to see a young man, a crowd favourite, in the not too distant future in this programme. That's going to challenge. Let's have a look at that again. Lampov, the winner, getting away very quickly blue on the inside line he's the teammate of Alexander Balashow in the Russian zone stable and the bare silver appearance of his bike sets out the signal that he needs a backer heat four Fadiv of Russia Simon of Austria Liebman of Germany and Franz Zorn of Austria 30 years old Frankie Zorn very much a crowd favorite now he's got the red helmet, blue Jürgen Liebman, white Havel Simon and Vladimir Fadiv with the yellow helmet. And no doubt who the crowd want to win, but Liebman thunders into the lead, but Fadiv straight in there, brings himself into the position to strike on the German outside while Zorn tried his move by going the inside of turn one and Zorn's move has paid off. The end of lap one, Fadiv has also passed the 30-year-old German for second position. Liebman relegated back to third. Liebman making a good impression. He rode well for the German team in the World Team Cup semi-final here in Berlin. But to beat the Australians, the Austrians rather, and the Swedes. And Fadiv at once powers on the pressure on Zorn but needs one more lap and he managed it as a man really making speedway and there's going to be a Grand Prix of ordinary speedway when I say ordinary this is even extraordinary isn't it on ice a Grand Prix in May next year in Germany first for a very long time well a lot more to come and bikes is bikes even like the road bikes here of course Back in just a moment. And here will be Stefan Svensson, Sergei Kasakov, Per Olaf Poser Serenius from Sweden, and Vladimir Fadiv from Russia. And immediately Fadiv takes the lead and runs away with it. Svensson tries to take second spot on the outside, but his compatriot Serenius holds him up at first. And now we'll see it 
as they really go into action in just a moment. So there's Svensson, Kasakov, Serenius and Fadiv. As I said earlier, 14,000 tickets sold for this. We really love their ice speedway here in Berlin. The Russians love it because they, in the main, dominate it. Two Russians against two Swedes here. And Fadiv takes the lead. Svensson tried hard to hold on to second spot, but Serenius holding him. And the back, uh, the middle two there, really hammering tongues at it. And it's Serenius still in second place, but no doubt about Fadiv, clearly on a mission. He won last year, wants to win again. And he really is setting a scorching pace here. And look at those second two. Both the second and third place are members of the Baru Blue Power Team run by German Danny File. And Vladimir Fingal making this his own heat five turns round to look at the other two Svensson had passed Serenius under the chequered flag a photo finish between the two teammates and Svensson's performance as uh, some of the press were commentating on in their media office there remarkable the 43 year old from Onskalisk is just returning after a horrible accident last season when his right leg got caught between the rear wheel and mudguard and the spikes cut deep into his flesh of his lower leg. He couldn't work again until last June and the accident happened last March. Fadiv wins Heat 5. We on to Heat 6. And here Hendrickson with the blue helmet got into the lead but it was Jürgen Liebman who squeezed past the man who is a truck driver from Finland to take the lead. And Tobias, after having started badly, is on the move. That's Gunter with the white helmet. And this is a bit of a reflection of Bayer's performance in the World Team Cup semi-final where he more than once fought his way from last to first. Oh, what a strong ride from him. So Bayer wins ahead of Lieberman. Proving there can be benefit made from having a month in the north of Russia before the Master of Spikes. Where they went practicing for four weeks. So Gunther Bayer, winner heat six. And we take another look at these 500cc machines. And those marvellous spikes. two-speed gearbox with clutch gear lever to be operated by kick down with right foot as I said before no brakes at all 180 are in the front wheel of those spikes 200 in the rear speeds up to 80 kilometers on the straight 145 on the straight rather on the turns they slide at about 80 Heat 7. Now this looks like a cracker. Saturday's winner, remember of the first part of this, already has his place in the final, Lumpov. 
and he's meeting Nicolin and also in there is a favourite of the crowd the Austrian Frankie Zorn Zorn blue helmet Lombard red helmet Nicolin white, Albom yellow and Nicolin leads from Lompov and Zorn and Lompov dived inside of Nicolin the two youngest Russians on a world level thunder down the main straight Nicolin trying to respond on the outside all of a sudden Zorn is there as well what a charger this young Zorn is And Zorn trying to get through into second place. In fact, he's taken that second place from Nikolin. He's trying to close on Lumpy. But the Russian who uh, seems to do everything with an ever-present smile on his face looks like he's going to hold on to victory. But evidence there of young Frankie Zorn, the Austrian, that he can... Uh, play on the same ice as these Russians, no problem. The track will need grading again. And after eight heats, it's Vladimir Fadiv, the uh, current master of spikes, who's at the top of the pile with six. Lumpov up there with six as well. Remember, he's already qualified for the grand final. Balashov has five. Zorn, Bauer, Nicklin, Serenius and Arco all have four. After 16 heats, it goes down to four finals, but only those in the A final. Only one, the winner of the A final, can go through into the grand final. The two others are selected on performance by the judges. So Heat 9, Lumpov, Serenius, Berman and Klotowski. And the reigning Swedish individual and league champion Berman replaces the Australian Harold Simon who broke a collarbone in his previous heat. Tough stuff this game. And Lumpov leads and runs away with it here. Well, Burrell of Serenius has to shake off the hard-charging Berman. Serenius, who's known as Poser, is a professional firefighter from Garth. He's not too happy with the setup of his bike at the moment. Lumpov clearly is. He's running away with it. So the man with the yellow helmet, Vladimir Lumpov of Russia. And Per Olav Serenius. In second place, fairly well spread out field, heat nine. It will get much closer as the programme goes on. Lumpov, the winner. comes from Siberia set on to heat 10 Bauer Frankie Zorn Kasakov and an Aiko a Finn a Russian an Austrian and a German the 21 year old Antiarko is widely regarded as the best reaction man coming off uh, the start well his reactions might be good down the inside but I can tell you that the, the man who had the best reactions to that one was undoubtedly Frankie Zorn so the Austrian in the front and one or two of the main rivals will be watching this fellow's performance 
Always got a word, always got a smile. And has a very determined nature to go along with it. Frankie Zorn. Antiarco, 21 year old. Looks like he's going to get second place points. Remember it goes 4, 3, 2, 0. And absolutely no problem with that. And the 21 year old in second place pretty happy as well. We'll be back in just a second. What is new? Uh, uh, my machines. Something on my machines is new. I have one machine is the same from last year, from the final. Uh, and we have one prototype. And uh, we must a uh, little, little bit working uh, at home by this bike. Uh. Well, you couldn't put Frankie Zorn down. He got in ahead of the break, and so too does Nyklin, not to be outdone. And he's saying he's very determined. The best riders in the world are here. He can't tell you who his uh, biggest competitor is, because simply they're all that good. And we're going to see the best of the action coming up. And it gets better right the way through this program. You join me in a second. And uh, back now on to the next heat. Riders gearing up for heat 12. You'll have the chance to see Nikolin again in action. Nikolin though with Fadiv. Three Russians in this one. Balashov as well. One Finn. Henriksen. Nicholson. Nikolin on the far right. And he left that rather late. But he's in the lead ahead of Fadi. But Fadi, when the last time out, has other ideas and uh, immediately dived inside and took the lead. And Nicolin having uh, difficulty in responding. The red helmeted Fadi is really looking like the man on song at the moment. Fadi was world champion in 93 and 99. He's a reigning World Cup holder with the Russian squad and he's uh, got a nickname the White Tiger of Siberia from his similarity they say to a Siberian Tiger he and that are said to be quiet and calm but blindingly fast when it really matters it was certainly very very quick as for the, the Siberian Tiger or the White Tiger from Siberia to give him his proper nickname saw in the slow motion there but he passing Nicklin on the inside under acceleration that's a move typical but let me tell you about that that's a, a madman Hibasho a former world champion this is an Umajoka it's uh, meant to pull him round I'm told that these type of uh, machines are actually raced in Finland uh, the first one you saw there is called an Umajoka and if you fall over, it carries on going until it runs out of fuel. I understand somewhere in Finland there's a man still looking for one after over a month. After heat 12, Fadiv and Lumpov with nine points each share the lead. Zorn with seven and then a gang with six. Stenson, Nikolin, Serenius, Arko and Balashov. Heat 13, Poser, Serenius, Liebmont, Arko and again Nikolin. Nicklin with the red helmet on the inside of the track. Liebman going well as well. And it's Nicklin followed by Liebman. 
And that was Arco who uh, went the inside line on turn two. He went low on Per Olof Serenius. Another a hairy move. All four riders still in with a chance of winning here. Nicklin leads from Liebman while Arco again chooses the tightest line of them all. And Arco's fearlessness has paid off. The 21 year old father of a baby son from Ulu. Not only past Serenius but also dived inside Liebman. Half a lap later, Aiko steals second place off the German. He's now back in battle with Serenius. Serenius doesn't take any risks, but Arco does. He attacks the leader, Nicolin. And Nicolin only just managed to close the door there. Puts a hand behind him as if to say, gosh, that was close. So Nicolin wins heat 13. The Nicolin fan club is here, and they're in good voice. Schlauer, as is his nickname. And that sign actually says, Schlauer on full throttle. It's amazing how good a linguist you can become when somebody's translating it for you in your ears in the background. And can last year's winner, Fadi, prevent Nicolin from earning that additional £10,000? Up until now, Fadi and Lumpov have been the most impressive. Remember, if Nicolin managed to win the grand final, he'd have had a third Master of Spikes, and he gets not only the £10,000 for winning, he gets £10,000 on top and keeps the trophy. Heat 14, Lumpov and Fadi in action here with Bootsma and Bauer. So the two titans from Russia meet for the first time today. Fadov took the early lead, and Fadi, to be honest with you, is really looking like he's almost in a class of his own. Controlling that from the front. And it's not that easy. He's still being pressed, he's being kept honest anyway by Lumpov. But it's a Russian 1-2. But which way? Adiv. Lumpov is not going to be quick enough to be able to get in a position to challenge him. There's the chequered flag. And Fadiv wins ahead of Lumpov and Baya. Now, uh, the man watching all that with very great interest is Vyacheslav Nikolin, who is after winning that 20,000. Here he is. The way the event has unfolded so far once again underlines the courage of this tournament. It's going to be hard. Yeah, I think they make a good race and uh, yes, yeah, very exciting. And uh, I mean, nobody knows who can win. So, uh, so many top boys and normally everybody can win this uh, in meet in meeting. And all the riders, they call it a Wimbledon of high speedway. And that is the man, the clerk of the course, and the promoter. As they move up to heat 16. We'll see Frankie Zorn in action again. Balashlov, Kazowski Jr. and Zvenson. Remember, it goes to an A, B and C and D final on the performance from today. And then in the A final, the winner goes through to the grand final with Lumpov, who's already booked a place. And then two are selected by the clerk of the course and the judges. So we've jumped to the start of the last qualifier of the day. Zorn takes the lead. Second place, Benson is ahead of Balashov, who's under pressure from Kladowski Jr. This probably will mean that Balashov Jr. will not qualify for the A. Balashov will not qualify for the A final. Well, the best four riders from the qualifying heats, and therefore can't make the final of the Master of Spikes.
But Frankie Zorn definitely can. A quick look over the shoulder. Certainly reassured himself there. And Frankie Zorn will secure his place in the A final. Got to keep it together to do that, of course. I think he's eased up just a, just a bit. To lay it down now would be sheer folly. There he is. He's delighted. But of course, before he gets into the grand final, he's either got to win the A final or prove to the organisers that he's worth being granted a wild card for that big final. Frankie's on, eh? So there's the points table. Goes right back to 17. Remember, Simon is out after that accident. Collarbone broken. We wish him back to health as quickly as possible. Now the C final. It was Finland's Jari Ablom who won the D final with an engine borrowed from Stefan Svensson. Kasakov finished a remarkable second. But per Olov Serenius in this one, everyone would have expected a better performance from the Swedish veteran. Serenius didn't start too well, and Liebman moves in front. And we're back with a duel that some of us witnessed on Friday night. Liebman versus Serenius. Bootsman is trying to attack Liebman. But the German can defend his lead. And he can defend it well. I know he's getting attacked almost on uh, every corner. Whoa! Jürgen Lieben. Yes, he got it. And uh, in front of a German crowd, they're delighted with him for winning the C final and a long uh, farewell wheelie but we're not going away for long because we've got faster, quicker and uh, more exciting still to come the master of spikes from Berlin as we move up to the B final I'm Tony Delahunty and we have some really good action still to come Remember, first of all, we've got to get the A final of the day to find out the, for certain, rider that goes through to the final, the grand final, to decide the Master of Spikes and win the 10,000 prize. Well, we've got the B final and then the A final of today's outings first before that. And the big surprise for the B final is that German Gunther Bauer, who's a golf greenkeeper in Bavaria, has qualified for it and can become fifth today if he should win the B final. Marco and Svensson. Those two just getting away a little bit there. And they are absolutely side by side. But Svensson has taken the lead. Well, they all join up. Well, the three of them there join up together. And there's no optical illusion that the man pushing through also was Gunther Bayer, the German driver. Well, the German rider 
roared on by the crowd here, but can he get close enough to get with the leader? Stefan Svensson of Sweden. Maya, who is getting hunted down himself. By Go. So it's going to be difficult for him now to get close enough. Very wide outside line there. But allowing power back down from Stefan Svensson. And Svensson wins the B final. And as we see the action in there, Svensson passes Aoko on the inside line and goes on to finish fifth overall in this year's Masters. Spikes not bad for the Swede in what was only his first ever ice speed race since an awful crash during last year's World Team Cup final. Now remember the A final which comes now will decide on one place in the grand final. Lumpov's already in there by winning the first half of this tournament. And they get taken round now and the reason they're getting taken round is not just to salute the crowd but to see if they want any changes on the track. When du auf der Maschine sitzt the question he's being asked is ice racing is one of the most dangerous forms of all motorsport do you think about the danger when sitting on the bike no I don't if I did that would do harm to my performance when it comes to racing you have to completely switch off that part of your brain and only concentrate on the start of the racing well the start of the A final Nikolin Russia Lumbalb Russia Zorn Austria Fadiv Russia Fadif, the oldest, he's 43, the youngest is Lumpov, he's already qualified, so maybe he should keep his powder dry. And remember, it is the grand final that's important, but one of the others could qualify, but Lumpov maybe want to go well as well. There's nothing like winning, and the way they go, and it's Frankie Zorn. What a declaration of intent from the Austrian. Zorn, and up behind him is Vladimir Fadif, Fadif on the inside line. Zorn looking likely to have a go back at him. Is he going to get a lesson from the older master? Or can he come back himself? And Frankie Zorn, a definite declaration of intent there. Because he's all over Fadid like a rash. But Fadid starting to... Oh, look at that behind. Oh dear, that was uh, Lumpov. That was Nykulin. And uh, the red flag goes up. Immediately, Fadid puts his hand up, say yes, I've seen it. But Frankie Zorn continues, there it is, and the second one was struck there, and that uh, sent Lumpov. Lumpov's in there, that's uh, they're searching for a Russian in the hay bales. Oh dear, but I can tell you happily that the signal from the track is they're all okay except for a restart uh, because the man judge to have uh, caused it Nicolin has been excluded that's the rules so free will restart Zorn, Lumpov and Fadiv I wonder whether Frankie Zorn can keep his bottle together now after that he made a good start last time but then uh, but he got away, but Frankie's on action replay. Straight, oh my goodness gracious me! And we've uh, got a similar sort of crash. And that's Lampov hanging like a spider in the rigging there. Well, Frankie Zorn looked like he was getting away, but then there was a touch on the back wheel. And Lampov must be wondering what's going to happen next to him. Lampy, who's already booked his place in the final, appears to have something of a liking to the bales well they'll unwrap him wipe him down and the judges this time say no one is at fault so you can all restart and Zorn Lumpov and Fadiv will do exactly that just three one goes through to the final Lumpov's already in it I think he might well keep his powder dry this time Lumpov with the blue helmet. Yes, he drops to third. 
Perhaps wondering whether these two lunatics in front, perhaps he's saying to himself, may take each other off and I'll win it anyway. Or maybe they'd have to start again with two if they found someone was at fault. But it's Vladimir Fadib who's taken the lead from uh, Frankie Zorn. And Zorn is hounding him and uh, Lampard is hanging back for safety. I think he is already in the grand final. He doesn't need to win this one. But Frankie Zorn wants to. And he's gone down the inside there. Frankie Zorn, and that was cool. But there, there's the right away. Fadib answers back, shuts the door. Neat as you like. Has Frankie Zorn got an answer? The German crowd cheering on the young Austrian here. It's actually deafening behind the noise, but... I can tell you that they are neck and neck as it goes through again. That is Frankie Zorn. Frankie Zorn is delighted. Not so delighted. Vladimir Fadiv, the Russian. Oh, I think he turned around to say, come on, let's shake hands. But I, in fact, I think an official turned uh, Vladimir Fadiv round. Yeah, I don't think it was a, an unsporting, I won't shake hands with you. I think I just saw the official there with the flag after the finish, turning him round. And Frankie Zorn celebrates in the sort of style that makes people very popular. Now, uh, gentlemen like Mr. Capriotti. I wonder if they're Frankie Zorn fans. There's certainly a lot of Frankie Zorn fans here. He's the one looking most likely to take it to the Russians. And now the super final of Master of Spike. So Lumpop was already in. Frankie Zorn qualified and the judges picked out Fadiv to go in as well. And Nikolin, despite the fact that uh, Nikolin had caused one of the stoppages of the A-final. This is the grand final. Zorn straight away in action. Looking to see if he can win this one, but no, it's uh, Vladimir Fadiv and Vladimir Lumpov at the front. Oh, they come together there. But Fadiv with the blue helmet. He won it last year. Lumpov won the first part of this tournament and he's chasing after him and those two are leaving the others well behind. Now, can Fadiv be the second man? Remember, Nikolin has already won this tournament twice and can Fadiv do exactly the same? Fadiv from Siberia, world champion in 93 and 99 and looking like he could be master of spikes again. Lampy couldn't do anything about it. So, yes, it's congratulations to Fadiv. He won it last year, and he's done it again. And in fairness, he's looked good all the way through. And all the... Uh, efforts of the others behind him and in particular Frankie Zorn, Van Zorn provided some excellent racing but although Lumpov really made a battle of it for most of that final heat we saw that the determination of Fadiv to claim the golden award at the Master of Spikes and he goes around with Gerd Siebers the man who invented the Master of Spikes, and he's also the man who's brought actual Speedway Grand Prix back to Germany, and it'll be on May the 5th in 2001 in Berlin. Austria's Frankie Zorn waving goodbye to his fans. They yell their hearts out to support the 30-year-old. Oh, there's that painted lady again. And the first prize giving for the best three from the A-final, Vladimir Lompov has already been honoured. As third, Vladimir Fadiv received his trophy for second. And Frankie Zorn, of course, the winner. And that was, of course, the A-final.
excellent entertainment also good family entertainment a lap of honour for the best three he's received the uh, massive spike oversized golden spike the trophy for the master of spikes is Vladimir Fadiv he's won it for the second time like Nikolin and at the sixth running in 2001 there'll be two riders who can win the extra prize money of £10,000 oh there she is again I'll leave you with some of the pictures from some of the most exciting racing for me Tony Delahunty oh I've got another assignment